Greetings, Captains, and welcome to Starbase 24, or more accurately, what's left of it. This is the first fleet action that Federation Captains gain access to in Star Trek Online. You can get into it pretty much out of the tutorials, and it stays available all the way up to Vice Admiral, and frankly, it's good for a quick blast. As far as plot goes, it's pretty simple. The Klingons have attacked and more or less wrecked Starbase 24, and now Starfleet is attacking and more or less wrecking the Klingons. Turnabout is apparently fair play. In terms of map layout, it is easily the simplest of the fleet actions. You have the Starbase, you have the spawn points, and between the two you have loads and loads of red markers indicating Klingon ships, and by the time you're done there are supposed to be much less of those. So, let us continue with the smiting. You really can't get lost on this map. At least not unless you're deliberately trying and... oh god. Someone's, someone's going to do a video, aren't they, just saying, I got lost on Starbase 24 just to spite me. Uh, please don't. The internet has more productive things to waste its bandwidth on. 419 emails, for example. Anyway, back on topic. Most of the packs you will encounter prior to getting close to the base are similar to this one. A single bird of prey with some Tadouche fighters hanging around trying desperately to be cool with their bigger brother. They all go pop fairly easily. You will hit the odd Negvar and Raptor closer to the base, but frankly you can get through the whole first phase without engaging anything heavier than the bird of prey if you so desire. Of course, if Captain Jenkins is on your squadron, then you're going to end up fighting the heavies anyway, but who cares, Captain Jenkins is going to die very very shortly afterwards, I assure you. If nothing else, this fleet action should serve to teach players a. The joys of teamwork, and B. The perils of just barreling straight for the nearest hostile contact in a universe where just about every opponent of Starfleet has access to an invisibility shield. Now then, let's deal with these raptors. This is all fairly standard cruiser stuff. You can see my weapons fit in the lower right hand corner. Torpedoes fore and aft, a dual beam array, and two standard arrays forward, three standard arrays aft. So pretty much stop cruiser stuff. Use broadside phasers to bring down the shields, high yield torpedoes, aft tube in this case because it allows me to open the range, and boom. Those of you paying attention to the map and indeed to the tactical situation, you will notice that I am deliberately leading my fight away from the starbase. This is entirely planned because there are 40 8 out of 50 Klingon ships dead in phase 1. Number 49 is presumably about to go boom, and the way these things are going, that Raptor is probably going to be number 50 if it will kindly die. How much health has he got left anyway? Oh, there we go. Right, phase 2, and I'm going to go to hell for using a Star Wars meme in a Star Trek video, but it's a trap! Yes, folks, the moment that 50th ship goes down, a large force, and you can see all the blips there, of Klingon heavies, and we are talking raptors, vultures, and negvars here, will basically spawn up and decloak in the space that you just so obligingly cleared the birds of prey and Todouche fighters out of if you barreled straight towards the Starbase. This is why I was lurking on the flanks. I have yet to see a situation in which a captain managed to get his ship out of that little mess without it exploding, and indeed it hasn't happened this time either. Unfortunately, it doesn't end with such foolish captains dying because the AI has a little bit of a quirk in this map. Most MMOs, when the AI runs out of targets, it resets the mob. The mobs go back to their original positions, they reset their hull status, they reset their shield status. Speaking of shields, I really need to rebalance mine. 
There we go. And it goes back to sitting quietly, downing cups of Ractagino and waiting for the next idiot to blunder along. The AI in this game doesn't always do that, and it doesn't do it here. Once active, the AI goes into a hunter-killer mode. It will pick the nearest Federation ship, or more commonly the nearest player ship, and it will start trundling towards it even if it ought to be off that ship's sensors. If you want another example of this happening, run Night of the Comet. And when you are engaged with the fleet of D7s, those of you who have run that mission will know what I'm talking about, if you are Klingon, you can cloak up, the D7s will still home in on you. The AI knows exactly where you are, cloaking device will know, and they're doing the same here. So we have got about 30 very hacked off Klingon ships turning up right on top of our spawn point. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are as old and crusty as me when it comes to memory will remember the term from EverQuest, Tray. Well, that's what you've got coming here. Good old-fashioned train of mobs. And like all good trains, standing in front of it can be a horrifically bad idea if you're not careful. Now, there are no death penalties in this fleet action, bar pride and a respawn timer, which is fortunate. However, if you wish to get through this without blowing up, then it is very much time for defensive tactics. You'll see that I've got shield power relatively boosted. In this case, it's set at about 90 to 95 with bonuses. And I am deliberately keeping the range open, so I'm rotating through port, rear, and starboard arcs. In fact, I've just lost the rear shield, so better get another arc into play. Tactical team to rebalance, I highly recommend having that as one of your Ensign Tactical Powers, no matter the ship, and keeping the range open to minimise the effects of the cannon. And even with all of that, I had so many birds of prey aiming at me at one point that they still shredded my shields in five seconds flat. Fortunately, I was able to get the arc out of the line of fire and get a fresh shield arc into place. So. Essentially, you keep holding the range like this if you're in a cruiser, and you keep chipping away, you keep birds of attention. Meanwhile, the escorts will be coming through. I recommend you stick to single target powers for this, because you don't need to pull attention to yourself. Knock down the birds of prey first, then the raptors, then move on to the cruisers and the battleships. Why? Because this is an MMO. Ships don't model subsystem damage in this game, aside from a very particular kind of death mechanic. We'll walk forwards a bit towards the end, because once you've whittled away the birds of prey and got the incoming fire under control, you can move on to the cruisers, and it devolves back into standard phase one tactics. Pick a mob and gang up on it. And that really is it. Starbase 24 is not a complex fleet action. If you can handle the crisis of the, a badly managed transition between Phase 1 and Phase 2, you are going to get this action done with no problems whatsoever. I'll see you next time, ladies and gentlemen, if there is one.